Hi, this is Scott Garibay. Today we're going to be talking about Andrew Yang, specifically dog whispering to evangelical Christians, specifically on Andrew Yang's marital status and his marital history. All right, so let's talk about it. All right, so it is my opinion that evangelical Christians are the turnkey solution to this election, okay? So one, I think every demographic is going to vote the way they're going to vote in the last election, except evangelical Christians. Any candidate that figures out how to talk to evangelical Christians, they can pull away every single evangelical Christian vote from Donald Trump because he spent four years proving to every evangelical Christian that he's not an evangelical Christian, right? And that the reality is he finds everything they believe repugnant. All right. Um, so, and, and I, I really, I think that evangelical Christians really truly are about 10 or 15% of the voting base, the voting base on both sides, Democrat. And, uh, if you take all the, all the voters across, you know, blue and red, I think 10 to 15% of them are evangelical Christians. Okay. All right. And so if you could take that 10 to 15% away from Trump, you can win. And so this is my guide for Andrew Yang specifically to dog whisper to evangelical Christians on specific topics, and this topic today is his marital history and his marital status, right? Um, specifically to evangelical Christians to get them to see him, to recognize him, and to vote for him, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm going to say is Andrew Yang should use, uh, he needs to use uh, um, perk up terms, all right? So uh, terms that evangelical Christians will that will understand as a dog whistle, right? And so, so the the dog whistle terms are uh, for today are set apart and sovereign. Okay, set apart like you, uh, Andrew Yang should use this divorced from. Uh, that's a weird word to use for today's topic. So, <laughs> they should use these not in conjunction with any type of religious speech. Okay. He should just use the word set apart and punch those words. Set apart, right? Evangelical Christians' ears will go, what, what, what did I just hear? Right, and the reason why is they hear these words almost every single week um, coming from their pastor, and the pastor says, set apart, right? Evangelical Christians use the word set apart instead of holy because that's what holy means. Holy means set apart. God is set apart, right? It means he's holy He's not like the rest of us. He's sinless, right? He doesn't have sin. It's a really, really important term to evangelical Christians. And they will get that rabbit hearing a wolf keen perk up when they hear it, okay? The other one is sovereign. The other word is sovereign, right? Evangelical Christians believe that uh, God is sovereign. Evangelical Christians do not believe that God does good things, right? They believe that he is holy, set apart, right? And then he is sovereign. The things that he does, he's like a king, right? He does whatever he's going to do. And because he is set apart, because he is automatically holy and always holy, the things he does are good. This is a really, really important distinction for evangelical Christians, right? They think he is sovereign. They believe he is sovereign, right? And set apart. And that God does not do good things, the things God does are good. This is a really, really important distinction to evangelical Christians. If you use set apart, if you use sovereign, evangelical Christian ears are trained to hear these words, right? So if you're using them in your speech, especially in the next debate, if you use sovereign and set apart, you are going to be dog whistling to evangelical Christians. And guess what? You really aren't going to be dog listening to the media. You get to skip the media and take the media out of the conversation between Andrew Yang and evangelical Christians. Okay. Now, once you have used these these perk up terms, right? These these you know rabbit ears to a wolf keen terms that are just going to like get evangelical Christians going. Wait, wait, what do you say? Right? Then you hit them with your marital status and your and your history. The Andrew Yang marital status and the Andrew Yang hist history. Now, I understand fully. Andrew Yang is not an evangelical Christian, not even remotely. He is Reformed Church, okay? He's from Reformed Church. They're Protestant and they're Presbyterian, okay? But I know that evangelical, that uh, that Andrew Yang is not an evangelical Christian, and the reason why is he self-identifies as spiritual but not religious. 
evangelical Christians do not do not use those terms. They do not use the terms spiritual but not religious. Okay. In fact, that is a term that would generally tell evangelical Christians this person is absolutely not an evangelical Christian. They might not even be a Christian, right? Now, now here's the thing. I don't think most evangelical Christians have any problem of voting for a non-Christian leader, right? But they do want a leader with character, right? I think evangelical Christians would love to have an evangelical uh, Christian um, politician, but most evangelical Christians are, are smart. And the reason why is evangelical Christianity is self-selecting for smart. Because one, you got to read the Bible a lot. You're told to read it every single day, right? And so if you're reading the best piece of literature that that's ever been created, that has amazing examples of virtually every problem you can run into in life, and you're reading it again and again, and your parents were like, brought you to the faith, right? Like, you're going to be in a smart family, right? Evangelical Christians are very smart, generally. The, the entire thing is self-selecting for smart, right? Because they're all crazy literate. And they read a ton, right? All right. So with that, and, and also again, the Bible's like a thousand pages long, and it's and it's and it shows virtually every problem that can happen in a human life. And it's like here's the answer, right? Like so, you know, you don't really get a lot of stupid evangelical Christians because they have all the answers in a thousand page book that they're told to read every single day, which they do generally. But some of us fall off, you know. But like you know, I've read it like a, I've read the Bible eleven times, cover to cover. All right. So at this point, okay. So. Let me keep going here. So Andrew Yang is not an evangelical Christian. I don't think he doesn't even self-identify as an evangelical Christian, right? But his marriage is pure evangelical Christian model, right? Like he has one spouse, right? Not three, not seven, not five, right? And uh, they chose to procreate, right? Which is right there in the Bible. It's like uh, be fruitful and multiply, right? So he has, oh, and he's got one wife, not one wife, not one two, three, sequentially, not one, two, three, simultaneously, right? At the same time, he's got one wife, one spouse, one spouse, right? That's straight evangelical model, right? He chose to procreate. That is straight evangelical model, right? So like his marital status, his marital history comes straight from the Bible. Now that's that's purely by coincidence that you know I don't think Andrew Yang chose that because like he's like oh he could have because like he's clearly not following the evangelical model right not if he's spiritual but not religious but he's fortunate and in this race is going to be a tough race you got to use every advantage you can get right so Andrew Yang has this uh, marital status and this marital history that is lockstep lockstep right straight down the line you know, exactly what evangelicals are looking for when it comes to character as shown within the Bible, right? The other part is Donald Trump doesn't, right? He's had, you know, so basically one of the things that the Bible says, there's debate within a lot of churches, actually within within evangelical churches, there really isn't a debate about this at all. If you're going to be an elder in a church, or uh, then you have to have had one wife, right? So basically, evangelical Christians are fully aware that divorces happen, they understand that, you know, sometimes people, you know, there's, there's certain situations that people choose to go into divorce, right? Every evangelical Christian says, hey, if you've had a divorce, we want you in our church. We want you as part, part of the body of Christ. You know, we, uh, of course that, you know, that situation is forgiven by God, you know, but you can't serve as an elder here because, because you made a sacred promise and then that sacred problem was broken. And this is really a big deal to evangelical Christians, right? So, and it's Trump's biggest weakness with evangelical Christians, right? Is they're like, you made a sacred promise three times, three times, right? Like, so you went before God and said, I'm going to love you forever three times, right? And like, Christians are like, uh, you really can't lie to God, right? Like, that's not cool, you know? Like, and so while there's incredible forgiveness in all evangelical churches for people who have gone through divorce, when it comes to leadership, evangelical Christians are saying, hey, if you're a leader, you're going to make a promise every day to a new person. If you made a promise to the person you love the absolute most, and then you decided to break that promise, what chance does anyone have of you keeping your promise to them? 
about nil, right? Like, you know, so like evangelical Christians are like, nope, if you did, if you decided to break your vow, right? And like, didn't love somebody forever and was like, this sacred thing could be broken. It's just not, it's, you know, so, so Donald Trump, his model. So basically Andrew Yang should immediately be pointing to Evelyn, my wife, my older son, my younger son. That's the whole list, right? With Donald Trump, and I don't think Andrew Yang should point this out, but every time he points out that he has one wife, it's all he's ever had, he's got two kids, they're both from the same spouse, or they're both with the same spouse, right? It points to Donald Trump, and he's like, okay, who was Donald Trump's first wife? I don't know. Who was Donald Trump's second wife? I have no idea. Who was Donald Trump's third wife? Melania, I know that one, right? Does she live with him? No. Okay, well, I guess that's fine. And then, you know, and then there's like, and then you're like, uh, how many kids do you have? A bunch. They're from a bunch of different people, right? Like, you know, basically, there's a model that has been expressed in the Bible. Evangelical Christians are told by the Bible, have love, consideration for everyone, no matter what their circumstance. But when you go to choose a leader, make sure they chose, they, they, they went by the model, right? And every evangelical Christian right now is looking at Trump and going, that ain't the model. But guess what? Like, even though he didn't mean to get there, right? Andrew Yang's right there, right? And every time he talks about his one wife, his two sons, it points to an evangelical Christian model of marriage, even though he's not an evangelical. And it pushes Andrew Yang toward the win, toward taking those evangelical votes, which is the key to winning this election. That's my opinion. Do you think I'm right or wrong? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.